This video is about how to create a Fruit Ninja game or a game similar to Fruit Ninja within Scratch. The first thing I'm going to do is create four different sprites. I'm choosing Paint New Sprite. In your game, the sprites could be fruits, they could be um, anything that you want them to be. They could be letters. In mine, I've chosen to just make them the arrow directions to keep things as simple as possible and as easy to understand as possible. Uh, each of these sprites is going to have some simple commands. When the game begins, each one of these sprites is going to be hidden, and then the game will decide which one it wants you to show, and after you press that key, then it will hide again. When the green flag gets clicked, you are going to hide. When I receive the message, and we're going to name these messages because remembering which one is message one, which one's message two, um, isn't any good. So let's just call this message show up. When I receive the message show up, show. Later on, we'll create a bit of code where it sends out, it broadcasts the message show up and then it waits until a key is pressed and once the up arrow is pressed then it can hide again this is the basic code that each one of these sprites is going to have I'm just going to drag the bit of code to each one and then I need to go in and change you know um, so the down arrow is actually going to say when I receive show down wait until the key down arrow is pressed Once each of these sprites have that code, um, we're going to go to the stage. Most of the code is actually going to go on the stage. When the green flag gets clicked, it is forever going to generate a random number. Um, so we actually need to store that random number in a variable. Uh, let's just call it show this. We're going to set show this to be a random number between 1 and 4. If the number stored inside of show this is equal to 1, then we are going to broadcast a message to show up. We wait until the up arrow gets pressed. And then we're going to give the player a point. All of the code that I have in here is going to be uh, reproduced exactly the same for uh, the up arrow, for the down arrow, for the left and right. So I'm just going to right click it and say duplicate. Just forever it's going to pick this uh, random number from 1 to 4. If that random number is 1, then it's going to show up. And so we're going to wait until we press up, and then it's going to give us a point. Um, it's also going to hide up after we press that up arrow. The same thing if the random number is 2. It's going to show the down arrow. It's going to wait until the down arrow is pressed and give us a point. If that random number was 3, it's going to show the left arrow. It's waiting until the left arrow is pressed. All right, let's test it out working really well. If I do not press the correct one, if I press left, up, right, nothing happens. But when I press the correct one, it chooses a new um, random number and works perfectly. One last thing I want to create is a timer. I'm just going to make a variable called time. I'm going to start a new script that says when the green flag gets clicked, set the time to um, let's say 30 seconds and then repeat 30 times change time by minus one subtracting a second and then each time uh, we're waiting one second and then finally once that has counted down 30 times it stops everything in the game let's go to the data section I want to turn off the show this variable since the player doesn't need to see that 
Uh, I'm also going to rearrange this so that the time is on top and points are at the bottom. I could rearrange it and put points over here if I wanted to, and let's test it out. The only problem is that I forgot to tell it to reset the points to zero every time someone starts a new game. So to do that, I'm going to say set points to zero.